coming up today on Real Life. My name is Ayana. When I was 28 years old, I chose to terminate my first unplanned pregnancy because I was in a very toxic relationship. When I thought I was pregnant again at the age of 30, I immediately became scared, confused, and very upset with myself. When I was 11 years old, my life began spiraling down. My parents split up and I was let down by both of them as I was stuck between their battles. I began drifting from my family and turned to boys to escape from the loneliness I felt. At the age of 16, I was consumed in a life of drugs and alcohol, which led to an unplanned, unwanted teen pregnancy. The father of the baby, along with my friends, said I needed to get an abortion because I was too young. My education would be ended and my life would be ruined. The social worker says, now let's talk about a name. Have you, have you thought of a name? She said, yeah, well, ever since I got pregnant, even before I knew it was a girl, I've been calling this baby Chloe. We were just floored. And both Walt and I, I mean, I, I don't even remember what we did exactly. I just know that I was ugly crying. We were weeping and she was like, oh, you hate the name. And we're like, oh my goodness, no, we love the name. Today on Real Life, you'll meet Ayana, Walt and Annie, and Mara. All of their lives were impacted in some way by an unintended pregnancy. Their choices include abortion, parenting, and adoption. As you watch their stories, you'll see how God moved inside of their lives as they dared to trust Him in the most challenging of circumstances. Up first today, meet Ayana. My name is Ayana. When I was 28 years old, I chose to terminate my first unplanned pregnancy because I was in a very toxic relationship. When I thought I was pregnant again at the age of 30, I immediately became scared, confused, and very upset with myself. I felt hopeless. My life was a mess. I was barely scraping by with a low paying job. I couldn't even afford a place to live. I was living with a friend and a child. It was a dark time in my life and I was in a very fragile state of mind. A friend told me about a woman's place and so I went there for a free pregnancy test and met with a really nice woman who told me about the different options I had, including parenting or placing my baby up for adoption. After I left, I still struggled with my decision and I was leaning towards abortion. One day I was driving by an abortion clinic when I saw some people in the front holding up signs. One of them said, I had an abortion and I wish I hadn't. And when I read that, I broke down and sobbed. During my next sonogram, when I saw my baby girl's arms and legs, my confusion ended and I chose life. Throughout my pregnancy, I met regularly with my life coach at a woman's place. What a blessing this has been, as they have been my main source of strength and became my support team. I don't know what I would have done without their encouragement and love. They were my cheerleaders every step of the way, as I learned how to become a godly parent. When Ari was born, I immediately fell in love with her. She is the best thing that ever happened to me. I can truly say that I am a changed person today thanks to my daughter. I thank God for sending me to a woman's place. They have been a blessing to me. God knew my heart. He knew that I was struggling and he knew that I needed a Christian support system. I continue to be involved with my life coach and I'm currently attending a post-abortion recovery group. Today I have become a totally different woman, a confident mom. I have a car, a full-time job, a place to live, and I attend church regularly. My name is Ayana, and I rejoice in knowing that Ari and I now have hope for a bright future. Ayana found hope for a bright future when she chose life and trusted Christ. And the good news is that same good, hopeful future is available to you as you trust Christ and obey God's Word. If you're thinking that you might be pregnant and you don't know what to do, you can visit the helpline for compassionate 
and confidential help. There are people that care about what you're going through. Up next, meet Mara. My name is Mara. When I was 11 years old, my life began spiraling down. My parents split up and I was let down by both of them as I was stuck between their battles. I began drifting from my family and turned to boys to escape from the loneliness I felt. At the age of 16, I was consumed in a life of drugs and alcohol, which led to an unplanned, unwanted teen pregnancy. The father of the baby, along with my friends, said I needed to get an abortion because I was too young. My education would be ended and my life would be ruined. I was in denial, so I went to the pregnancy center in Largo for a free test to see if I was really pregnant. To my dismay, the test was positive. My life coach sat me down and placed a tiny little baby in my hand. She said, this is what your baby looks like. She explained that there were other options and that I had choices. She told me God loved me and had a plan for me and this child, and if I choose to carry to full term, they would be there to support me. Then she prayed for me, and even though I was agnostic, I listened. I left there with a heavy heart, still not knowing what to do. For about three months, I hid my pregnancy, and I saved as much money as I could for an abortion. When I was about five months along, I began to show. I finally had to tell my parents, who agreed abortion would be the best choice. When my dad took me to the clinic in Tampa, I waited three hours with 30 other women. When the doctor finally called me in and described to me how they were going to terminate my pregnancy, my mind flashed back to a little baby I held in my hand at the pregnancy center, and I remember they said I had choices. I realized that it was me who was choosing to brutally kill that little one, and so instead, I chose to go home and I chose life. When I went back to school, I was surprised at how many people supported me. I returned to the pregnancy center and they gave me counseling, classes, and resources. I'm so grateful that I went there. The seeds they planted during my first visit gradually changed me in so many important and internal ways. Having my daughter Lily has given me a new purpose in life. I never had a reason to succeed before. I graduated from high school and I'm now in college studying to become a teacher. I want to be able to positively change children's lives so they can influence others' lives. What better place to do this than in the hearts of children? They are the hope for the future. Lily's grandparents started taking her to church on Sundays, and she would come home so happy and kept asking me to go with her. So I did. At age two, my daughter accepted Jesus Christ in her life, and it was through her I accepted him into mine. From that day, God has blessed me with a loving, godly husband and a priceless child who brings me so much joy. I am so grateful the Lord rescued me through the pregnancy center. Now, instead of escaping with drugs and alcohol, I've become an avid reader. I love books. It's nice to get lost in someone else's drama instead of my own. My name is Mara. Just as Winter was given a future by hope, I was given hope for my future by the pregnancy center. They saved my baby, and through Christ, my baby saved me. Just about everyone in Mara's life thought that abortion was the best decision. Her dad even drove her to the abortion clinic. It was there in the doctor's office that she remembered she had choices and changed her mind. If you're under pressure to abort your pregnancy, please contact the helpline. You will get confidential and compassionate help. It's important to know your options. Up next, meet Walt and Annie. I grew up on my parents' 100-acre property, and I refused to stay inside. I loved being in nature. I would just go out there by myself, and I'd have all this time, and I would be talking to God, and we'd have this conversation, and like I didn't know that that was strange or unusual. I would just pray to Him, and then sometimes He would, he would say something to me and speak to me. I was about 10 or 12 years old. Uh, middle of the day, God gives me 
a very vivid picture of a little kid and I'm holding her swinging around in um, my parents' yard and she's just laughing like crazy. In the picture that I had in my mind, she had dark skin and dark eyes and uh, God said, this is gonna be your daughter and her name is gonna be Chloe. Um, Walt and I grew up together. I think he moved to town the year I was born so we've known each other my whole life. Um, when I was 10, we moved right across the pasture from him, <laughs> so we grew up together. Her family and my family were friends, and so I got to go over to her house um, frequently. Of course, she's a little munchkin, so I'm not really paying attention. First, I was using shampoo and conditioner, but not anymore. Now I use this. I don't know the name, but it is good for your hair. So I, my whole life, I was like, I, I think Walt Manus is amazing. <laughs> and I always thought when I grow up, I want to find someone just like him um, who was in my age group. <laughs> I went to university um, about 30 minutes from where he was living. And when I, when I went, he just kind of came in and helped get me settled and helped introduce me to a church. And so we just started spending more and more time together. And we were sitting in his car just talking and we had this conversation about what our dreams and our hopes were for the future. And um, I said that I felt like um, God had just made me to be a mom. That's what I wanted more than anything. I wanted to be a mother. And I said that I had actually a name picked out already that I wanted to name my daughter. And, and he, he said, I do too, which I thought was weird because, you know, I didn't think guys did that. <laughs> and uh, I was like, well, what's the name? And she said, Chloe. And he's like, you've got to be kidding me. You won't believe this. God gave me when I was 12 that name, Chloe. So he's telling me this story and I'm thinking, this is crazy. Like, first of all, I don't have a lot of experience with God speaking to me like that. <laughs> she was in the same place that I was. We couldn't believe it, you know. In the picture, Chloe always had olive skin. So he always thought he would marry a woman with olive skin. She can't have a, a brown eyed child. I didn't know what to do with it. I think we both knew pretty early on that we were gonna get married. It just, I don't know. The best way I can describe it is that Walt felt like home to me. Like from the very beginning, I felt like yeah, this is, this is where I belong with this guy. <laughs> when we first got married, we, we decided we wanted to wait a little while to have children. We ended up um, traveling, doing some work with some different missions agencies. And then at a certain point we realized, no, this is the right time. We want to start pursuing having children. And we were so excited. We thought, we thought it was just going to happen immediately, you know? And so we were like, yeah, let's start our family. Let's have children. And, you know, months turned into years and pretty soon we were four years into trying and still nothing. I had always clung to this promise that God had given me about the daughter. So I didn't know when it was gonna happen, but it was, it was starting to get hard to wait. It was really hard. It was really, um, I don't know. I think I, I struggled with questioning God's goodness in that time um, because I just felt like it was so mean, you know, like such a mean thing to do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so there was like a probably four and a half year period that um, I would say was really, really hard on us individually, on us um, in our marriage, and also like the way we were relating with God, especially for me. I felt like, is God good even when he's not doing things that I would define as good? All of her friends were having kids and, and she had to just wait. and put on this cheesy smile, this fake smile, and say, we're happy for you. And every time that we, we would hear about someone getting pregnant, we would just be devastated because we were thinking, this isn't gonna happen for us. We're just, we're just fools. We're fools who, who want kids, and it's never gonna happen. And then I would say somewhere, I feel like God shifted something in me so significant. There was a point where I started to realize, actually, no, I. I can live like a really full and really happy life and like experience so much with God and like know Him so deeply and be satisfied in the deepest way a human can be satisfied um, even without having a child. It sounds like a simple concept, but for me that was a big, a big change, a big shift in, in my perspective. We kept praying through that time, God, if you're saying that you don't want us to be parents, like just take this desire away from us. But more than ever, we wanted to be parents. Like it just, the desire was almost getting stronger. He kept compelling us in his love to like love, love this idea of being parents and love this idea of, um, yeah, of having this little girl. And so 
we, that's what we did. We just kept, we just kept praying. There were tons of people praying for us and with us, people that we didn't even know. Like people would come to us and say, "All oh, these, this Bible study group I'm a part of is praying for you guys, is praying for this situation. And I don't know, that was a really um, special thing to get to f feel like the body of Christ in a larger, on a larger scale, like standing with you through something. Annie is like, well, maybe, maybe we're supposed to adopt. And I was adamantly against it. How are you feeling about adoption? Yeah, I don't want to speak about adoption. I had this thought of like, I don't want, I called it a Band-Aid baby. I, we are struggling, we are hurting, and you know, I don't, I didn't, I didn't want just a fix. I didn't, I didn't want just some kid. I wanted the kid that we were supposed to have, you know. And God just like, he progressed, progressed me from like being adamantly against adoption to be like, you know, I, I just want the kid that God wants. Maybe it's not supposed to come through biological means. Maybe it's, it's supposed to be through adoption. So what do you think? I think that I'm very excited to adopt, but waiting will be hard. We had gone through all the paperwork Annie had done so much work, and I had supported her in that, but I still wasn't convinced that the adoption was right. I remember one night we were at Walt's sister's house and I was checking my email, and there was an email that came in and it said, it's a girl. I clicked on it and I realized it was from the adoption agency, and they said, we just wanted to let you know that a birth mother has chosen you guys, and yeah, you're gonna be parents. And I was like, I just sat there looking at the email like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Annie gets this email, she's super excited, and I'm just like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wait and see. Cause I don't, I don't know, you know? We have some adoption news. Finally, there's something happening. Yeah, we're really excited. She'll be born in late February or early March. Coming close. And we're working on her name right now. We're working on it. The name Chloe is completely off, off the table. We've abandoned it. We had decided, oh, that was just a fluke thing. That was a coincidence that we both liked that name. You know, that was nothing. And so we had even talked about a different name. And the social worker working with us, she says, okay, well, the birth mother would like to meet you before she has the baby. And we were like, yes, we want to meet her. Sounds great. And so we took a trip up to Wichita. Today's a big day, huh? Yeah. What are we doing? We're going to meet Allison for we... the first time. You nervous? Yeah. A little bit. We went to the house where she was living and we knocked on the door and... She opens the door and it looks like a grown-up version of this little girl in my head that was from the past. And I was like, oh my goodness, what in the world, you know? And so in a second, in my head, the name was back on the table. We went up to this room and sat and talked for, I don't know, three hours or so. The social worker says, now nah, let's talk about a name. Have you, have you thought of a name? She said, yeah, well, ever since I got pregnant, even before I knew it was a girl, I've been calling this baby Chloe. We were just floored. And both Walt and I, I mean, I, I don't even remember what we did exactly. I just know that I was ugly crying. We were weeping and she was like, oh, you hate the name. And we're like, oh my goodness, no, we love the name. God has spoken, he's told us this name. It just dawned on me before I ever even knew you guys existed or anything. I just was like, I want a name, you know, this little girl Chloe, and I didn't know if you guys would like it or stick with it or anything like that. I just kind of figured maybe you'd have something else, but, so that's why, like, when I threw it out there, I was just kind of like, um, I've been calling her Chloe. <laughs> and then you guys like, oh, and I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, it's my name. <laughs> <laughs> All those doubts about having the Band-Aid baby were just completely out of the window, and I was, it felt like, I just had full body shivers. It was, like, it was like the Holy Spirit was just right there. This is so much a God thing that's going on right now. You've been uh, planned for for a long time. <laughs> Before you were even conceived, we knew your name. And I think we know what you're gonna look like. I don't know, but we'll see. I love you. We look forward to we look forward to seeing you. <laughs> when the birth mom said the name Chloe, you know, in an instant, I had become a father. Even before she was born, I was her dad. This surreal presence of God was just all around us, and I just 
I felt him saying to me, see how much I love you? Do you see this? Like, do you see what I've done? Like, I've been writing this story. You had no idea I've been writing this story for years since, since Walt was a kid. I've been writing this story and I realized how foolish I was, I guess, like how, how um, my perspective was just so skewed in my own pain that what I saw as him not loving me was in fact him being the most loving he could have been. Day of. Yeah. What were you about to do? Go to the hospital. I can't find your toothbrush holder. Well, no, are you nervous? A little bit. Yeah, I was just crazy nervous that morning. Like, um, I remember going to the hospital and, and then all of a sudden it was happening. All of a sudden the doctor came in and was like, okay, she's ready and you're gonna have a baby now. And um, I don't know, and there was just all this movement and bustling around and then Chloe was there. Like I was, I was looking at this baby, this, my baby. I was just looking at her all of a sudden, like she wasn't there and then she was there. Big girl, how are you doing, Annie? I'm good, I'm really good. Yeah. <laughs> so many years of anticipating her as a child, she's here, you know? She's been a part of my life for so long and she's finally here. I remember just look, like holding her and looking at her face and being like, I'm your mom, I'm your mom. And I just sounded so weird to say those words. There was no mistake, I am the father of this child, just like God had always planned it to be. And I'm completely owning it. Like on cloud nine, just amazed at what God has done. It was like he was whispering to me in that moment, like I've been here this whole time. And you didn't know, but I've been here this whole time. I've been walking this thing with you. And I was just saying, trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. I've got something good. I've got something good up ahead. It's a constant struggle to just sit in his sovereignty. And when everything is falling apart in your, in your mind, just to wait. And, and there were so many people that got to celebrate with us. I can't even count the number of people who came and said that, um, that they had prayed for us or that they had um, waited for this baby with us or that our story had somehow spoken to them. I don't know, I, it was just such a, a special time of seeing like, this wasn't just about me and Walt and this baby and, and our birth mother, it was about like all these people that God wanted to touch and encourage and bless through this story. He just doesn't leave anything to chance. It's, it's not random. And it's just, it's amazing. It's a miracle, you know. It only speaks of God. Uh, people can say, ah, oh, it's, it's, just, it's just a coincidence, you know. You, you can't convince me that. I think God is incredible. I think it's incredible the way that He flung the stars into space. And that same God, the same God who keeps the world from falling apart, He loves me. He loves me. <laughs> With or without us ever having a child, that's what he's taught me through this. Like, he loves me, and I can be so secure in that love. And to be able to trust that and to rest in that, I mean, it's the greatest gift. We'd like to thank our friends at the Christian Filmmaking Ministry, Moving Works, for this story. You can watch the full version of Chloe and other short films like this for free at their website, movingworks.org.
As you've watched Real Life today, I hope that a couple of things are very clear to you. One, that you are unconditionally loved by Jesus Christ. And two, that when we trust Him as Savior and obey His Word, He promises to work everything out for our good, regardless of how challenging our circumstances are. I'd like to take a moment to pray for you. Father, I come to you right now in Jesus' name. And I ask you, Father, that you would show your love to each person watching in a very real and tangible way. That by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would give them the faith that they need to trust you and to obey your word so that you can work everything out for their good. Father, these are your promises, so we stand upon your word. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us here today on Real Life. We'll see you again next week. If you would like to share your abortion-related story, please contact us through our website, www.reallifetv.life, or through our Facebook page at Real Life CTN. If you need help in dealing with either an unplanned pregnancy or regret from a past abortion, please contact the H3 Helpline at 866-721-7881. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Thank you.